In this video, I'm going to test out seven ways to make your Illustrator files smaller when you save them and see what the results are. I think this is really going to put my computer recording while doing a lot of heavy RAM tasks to the test. So we'll see. Let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer. I love to teach people graphic design, how to run a successful stationary business. If you're interested in this kind of thing, stick around on my channel and check out our membership stationary school just for wedding invitation designers, which is linked in the description of this video. Okay, so I have seven methods we're gonna to test to see the file size. This is an envelope liner that I use a lot that is absolutely massive and takes up a lot of RAM. It's always a very large file and it always takes a while for Illustrator to really handle this file. So one tip that I will start out and say is something like this, like there's no real reason for it to be vectorized. And the reason that it is taking up so much space and making such a large file is that it has so many anchor points. So we'll get to an option in a minute that kind of deals with that. But in the case of something like this, you may just not want to actually vectorize something and keep it as um, a PNG or a roster image. So the first thing we're gonna test is an option that is, is actually turned on on your files, but just on the off chance it's not, and let's see how it's actually saving you anything. So when you go into save as, save as, you can see this file is currently uh, 12,300 kilobytes. So we're going to save it as something else, and we're gonna uncheck this use compression. It's always automatically uh, checked, but we're gonna see how much that's actually saving us. And it takes a second and then okay and then we're actually going to go into this and we'll see that this is 28,000 kilobytes versus 12,000 with that use compression button turned on so this is really saving us a lot make sure that that is turned on so we'll turn that back on when we save the second time and we'll notice it's back to 12,000 Perfect. In that same dialog box, we are going to try one that we can turn off. So hopefully this will start saving you even if that option was already automatic on your Illustrator, which is this create PDF compatible file. So one thing that I want to let you know is if you don't create the PDF compatible file, it basically means that this is not going to be able to be brought into other Adobe programs. So if you need to place this into Photoshop or something, you're not gonna be able to do that unless you have the PDF compatible file. You can always go back and turn this on if you need it. So I wouldn't do it like the way that I always create my mockups is by placing my files into Photoshop. So I wouldn't do it for my main invitation designs, but there are definitely some designs the future that I might not need this on. For instance, this envelope liner is a great example because I'm not going to need to use it in other Adobe programs. So let's see what happens if we turn this off. Oh, it didn't even have to think about saving. That's great. Okay, and now it is 8,000 kilobytes. So that saved us about a third of the size of this file, which is really awesome. So, so far, methods one and two are working really well. Both of those are in the save as dialog box. Now, I mentioned that this just has a ton of anchor points. I actually simplified it down from 36,000 anchor points to about 20,000 anchor points yesterday, but let's see what we can do to make it even smaller. So you're just gonna right click on it and do simplify. In Illustrator, kind of like how in Photoshop, the bigger the file size is how much information in it. Illustrator's information is by anchor points. So if you have so many anchor points, it's going to be so much information that Illustrator is going to take a while to process it because they're basically doing the math on every single one of those anchor points all the time. So we'll go into simplify and this currently has oh, 154,000. So we got down from I thought we had 36,000 yesterday and we got to 15. We actually had 360 and got to 150. So let's kick it down even further. Let's go to here and let's see how many that is. So that's about 138,000. And we're not really noticing a big difference in the quality of this image or anything. Let's take it a little bit further and see if we do start to notice. This is 98,000. And you can see like right in here, this started to look a little bit weird. So that's one of those things you just kind of want to pay attention to it to see where it starts to affect your image. Uh, but if it's not going to affect your image, a lot of times you can simplify things. Another option would be to just actually kind of manually simplify some of the paths. So you can see like all of these little dusty dotty guys, some of that is adding to the elements, sometimes some of that is adding to the image, but some of it's not. So if we were to just go in, we could actually like delete 
some of those small paths or something like this little image probably has so many <laughs> anchor points for what it needs as 268 and it's just like a tiny little piece of the flower so let's bring it down way further that's even only like 216. You could also use the smooth tool, which is E on any of these paths to kind of simplify them, smooth them out a little bit. Or of course you can use any of the anchor point tools to just get rid of a bunch of anchor points. There's a lot of different ways to do this, uh, but I love that simplify feature for something like this. And it doesn't really change the image too much until you get really low. So let's see, we took it down from about 158,000 to about 98,000. So we got rid of um, about a third of the anchor points. So let's go ahead and save this in here. I'm gonna add this create PDF compatible file back because we were at about 12,000 kilobytes at that point. So let's see if we removed about a third of the anchor points in this file where we end up. Okay, we're ending up about 8,500. So this didn't do quite as much as unchecking the PDF compatibility, but this is something where it can really it can start to affect the artwork. So we wanna be cautious on that. We don't wanna go as far as we necessarily could go as first file size. There's always that form and function balance that we wanna create. But definitely removing about a third of the anchor points actually removed close to not quite a third of the size of the file. Okay, one option I'm interested in testing out is when we're working with images. So this image is linked in this file. If I move it from my downloads folder, I'm not going to be able to use it here in Illustrator again. And the way that I did that was I clicked file place. So I just kind of placed this image in here. Now let's see how big this file is, file size test two. This one is coming in at 20,000 kilobytes with that image. So then what if we were to embed that image in this file and then we'll go ahead and save that again. It's taking a second and now we are at 46,000 kilobytes. So basically embedding the image made this file about twice as big as far as placing it. So this is a good reason where you, can, you should put all your elements in the folder for the client and bring them into Illustrator and work with them, but not actually embedding them until you're ready to send that out. I often don't embed my images or anything until unless I'm going to actually send that out to someone else to work on and they need those images in the file as well. But if I'm going to save this as a PDF, I don't need to embed the image in order to do that. Now let's see, we were at 20,000 kilobytes. Another one I'm curious to test out is if we kind of get can get rid of some of the outskirts of this. So this image is a clipping mask. So I'm curious what will happen. This is actually the full image, but what if we get rid of all that extra information by rasterizing this image? So I'm going to go up to object and click rasterize. We're gonna do 300 DPI because that's what we need to print it. And we're going to keep everything else pretty much the same. So it's gonna take a minute and then let's see, I'm gonna save this file. In theory, what we've done is embed this image, which took us up to, I think, 46,000 kilobytes, but we've also potentially gotten rid of some of the extras. So my theory is it's gonna be somewhere between 20 and 46, let's see. Oh, okay, so we're at 13,000 kilobytes. So getting rid of that extra part of the image, even though we did embed the image also, made it a lot smaller. I love that. I'm really excited to learn that. All right, I've opened a much larger document with a bunch of different watercolor pieces because those are usually very large to test this next theory. So what we have is this invitation, which is saved. We've got 53,000 kilobytes and I'm just gonna act like I'm saving this for print. So just this invitation. So let's do um, Caitlin invite. Save it as a PDF, and I'm going to select just Artboard 2. Now on here, the thing that we're testing is this preserve Illustrator editing capabilities. What I found is if you have this checked and you reopen the PDF in Illustrator, it's going to show you all the other information, whereas if you don't have this checked, it's just going to give you that one piece that you need. So for instance, if you're saving all these files as PDFs to upload to a printer or something, it's going to keep a lot of information that you don't need. You don't need the RSVP information in the invitation file because then you're gonna also save an RSVP file later. So let's test it out and see. I'm gonna save this PDF and it is 7,700 kilobytes. So now let's do no 
Oh, unchecked. Let's do that. We'll go into range two again. And then I'm going to uncheck. And my theory is that it's going to make that a much smaller file size. Okay, not a huge jump here, but we did get almost 2,000 kilobytes worth of data out of that file just by unchecking that box. This is something that I always uncheck when I'm saving files for print because when I'm sending it to a printer, I do not need anything else from this Illustrator file. I just need the information from this particular artboard. And this will probably make a bigger difference when the rest of your artboards are larger. If you have a file that's got 20 artboards that just have text on them, it might not make a huge difference, but definitely when you have these watercolor huge files, it's going to make a big difference. All right, for this next one, I had to kind of make something. <laughs> so I added a bunch of new swatches from our stationary swatch book, which just has a bunch of swatches that stationary designers use. I made a couple of gradients, and then I also made a pattern swatch, which is this one. Let's use that one just to show you. <laughs> It was just a pattern swatch of the gradients that I created. So we're going to see if we notice a difference when we save this with these things versus without. So I'm going to save you Caitlin's invites. It's going to take a second. It did feel like it took a little bit longer, but that might just be because I've been recording for a while. So let's see. We have 52,000. 87 kilobytes. Okay, so now what if we go in and delete all of these swatches? That is one thing that people said to do. So especially like gradients, shape swatches, pattern swatches. I'm going to go and delete pretty much everything that's in here. I also have these folders that kind of always come up. And let's just delete everything and see what happens. See if we notice a difference. All right, now let's look at that. Okay. Okay, this went down from 5287 to 5234. So this is a massive file outside of the swatches. This has just so much information in it with all the watercolor and everything. So I definitely think you would see a larger impact if the file was not quite so full of all those watercolor impact, uh, watercolor images and things like that. So deleting your swatches, especially if you just have a ton of them, especially gradients and pattern swatches, can have a little bit of a difference on here, but kind of just like I assumed since we didn't have a, a lot in here compared to the rest of the data in the file, um, it didn't make a huge difference. It's not making as big of a difference as some of the other things that we tested. So just as a reminder of what we did, first of all, we went into the save save as option and made sure that we have used compression checked. If we don't need to use this in any other Adobe programs, we can uncheck the PDF compatible file. That's going to make it smaller. We can, if we have a lot of stuff um, vectorized with tons and tons of anchor points, we can use the simplify feature or smooth tools or other anchor point features to lower the number of anchor points in our document in the first place. You also want to consider this was kind of a side point, not necessarily vectorizing things that don't need to be vectorized. This would be a great example where the PNGs would print just as well as the vectors. Although the reason that I vectorized in the first place was because I needed to change the uh, colors and edit some of these things in a way that I needed them to be vector for. So just consider that if you have the option of not vectorizing, maybe that's a good option. Then we noticed we had about two times the file size if we embedded the image versus just linking it. But then when we actually rasterized the image after we were kind of done with the clipping mask and shaping it and moving it around and everything, that made the file um, a little bit smaller even than just the linked image. When we had a lot of different artboards and we were saving as a PDF, we used that, nice, preserve Illustrator editing capabilities. We turned that off. And that made a big difference. And then we also went in and deleted any unused uh, gradients or pattern swatches or just regular swatches in the first place. And that had a small difference. Of course, you'll see some other options here in Save As, especially when you're saving as a PDF um, that will uh, work on the quality. So what I found is high quality print is great. Any of these PDF X's are great. Press quality typically is great for me as well. But then when I go into smallest file size, I only use these when I need to send a large proof via email or something, but it's not the best quality. I do find that it reduces the quality of some of my images visibly. So I would talk to your printers before necessarily using any of these because it will determine how you're printing and everything, but they definitely can affect the file size as well. 
Maybe I'll do another video on that in the future. But for now, we have seven tips for reducing the size of your files in Illustrator. I would love to see any other tips you'd like me to test here and any questions that you have about Illustrator invitation design. If you're interested in making this a career, definitely join Stationery School, which is linked in the description of this video for courses and helpful lessons. Thanks, everyone.